soldier in a long ago forgotten army that who was centuries ago but these times are same bleak in your memory now as the setting tundra sun kings queens alive legends and dragonborns you have outlived them all and you will outlive the very many after them you have time for this Time to master your smitten skills and time to create enchanting masterpieces. Time to crawl the darkest depths of Tamriel and time to enjoy beautiful night rainstorm. You are not just a mere fledgling bloodsucker. You are not afraid of sunlight and your face is never losing its humanity. While being a beast, you still love the life of Dunmer you once was. You are the beast master. You are above all of them, even above the Lord to whom you are serving now. But you don't mind this, you don't care about the titles and ranks, and now you are a royal guardian of the oldest Skyrim vampire, a member of Lord Harkon's court. A blood knight who is ruthless to his enemies, but can you actually call them enemies? Emil, more likely. Collecting the blood knowledge all over the Tamriel through centuries, you tasted thousands. As a proud warrior, you despise mages and their tricks, and you don't need magic. Your body is a quintessences of strength, speeds and abilities of godlike creature. And until sun will set and rise, you will be roaming this world, revel in battle and enjoy the eternal life. Welcome folks, today I present you a character build based on a vampire gameplay. Vampires was pretty cool mechanics in Skyrim, but they lacked originality, diversity of abilities and both roleplay and power gaming aspects in overall. But thanks to amazing Sacrosanct mod, we can fix all these problems, and combined with regular core of the best Skyrim build series, it will result in incredibly powerful and fun to play vampire warrior. Welcome the Blood Knight, a unique build, ferocious and unkillable vampire warrior focused exactly on the benefits of human form and sated vampire state. With strength of giant and speed of light, who is eliminating enemies before they even land a hit and stands as an indestructible rock when hit, draining the vital forces from his enemies even on a distance. This build also requires much lower level to shine compared to other my character builds, which is also good. Let's take a look. Race. There are two best fitting options, Orc and Dunmer. Orc is a great for brutal force character like Blood Knight, due to his 20% effectiveness bonuses for armors and weapon stats, and Shockwave ability is a great saving skill, working in synergy with vampire abilities as well. Second. And the more preferable option, which I am playing in this video, is Dunmer. Dunmer is the most balanced choice for Vampire in meaning of tenacity. Vampires are weak to fire and Dunmer passively have bonus fire resistance, which is partially compensating this drawback. Using the power of their ancestors, Dunmers receive additional fire resistance and armor bonus, completely negating weakness to fire and gaining more protection against physical damage. The ultimate racial abilities, as always, I leave for you to discover. Standing Stone The best choice ever here is the Lord Stone. The scene is Blood Knight, is strongly tailored around power attacks, and Lord Stone is giving great bonus to them and, what if more important, lets you power attacking even when out of stamina, but with decreased damage. In return, it prevents your stamina from regenerating in combat, but don't be afraid. While looking scary, this drawback actually will not be an issue for this build at all. I will explain that later. The ultimate Lord ability is amazing saving power that is knocking down enemies around you, dealing damage and also drains their stamina. Attributes Blood Knight has insane power gaming abilities, and so all your attributes will be gradually increasing drastically, but in overall, when rising your attributes, rise only HP and stamina in 2 to 1 ratio. Don't rise magicka at all, you will not need it. Now the perks. Blood Knight has 3 main and 3 secondary skills, which are block, heavy armor, one-handed and smithing and chanting alchemy respectively. Block. 
Here everything is pretty simple. Take the basic perk, quick reflexes perk to have that amazing and unique looking slow in time effect when blocking a power attack. Take deflect arrows and dominion for additional protection from arrows and all damage sources in general. And take the whole right branch to greatly increase bashing damage and be able to knock down enemies while running with a shield. As for the left branch. Take only basic time block perk in order to open block runner perk, which allows you to move at full speed with the shield raised. You don't need to invest further in time block branch as Blood Knight is not a duelist, but a ferocious and fast warrior. Heavy armor. Here, take almost everything possible except of just a few perks you don't need. Don't take Cushion perk, as vampires don't receive fall damage by default. Do not take Lead the Tempest, because you will not have any minions and will not rely on followers. Also, don't take the very right branch related to Railing Standard, as it is also mostly party oriented. The rest of heavy armor perks will not only give you insane physical defenses, but also give some unique abilities like additional magic resistance based on your total armor or face of the mountain master perk that improves your armor so much that enemies who landed power attack on you are receiving such a strong recoil so they are knocked down. One handed. Take the boss left branches which are universal, besides only the rogue's parry perk that is not fitting shield warrior. These branches will greatly charge your one-handed power attacks and give additional damage burst as well as decreasing power attacking cost. When it comes to weapon specialization, it is absolutely matter of taste. I am personally always choosing swords, because this branch has both offensive and defensive bonuses like decreasing enemies attack and pushing them back from you when sideways power attacking. And of course, take the Wandering Warrior Master perk for sure to receive additional cumulative 20% bonus to one-handed damage. Now the secondary skills. Smithing. Take the basic perk, Arkham Blacksmith perk just in case, and the whole very right branch, which is about Advanced Workshop perk. This branch is allowing you to improve weapons and armors far beyond limits, even beyond legendary, receive additional bonuses based on your smithing skill, and so on. The choice in smithing specialization is a matter of taste, but simply looking from bonuses amount, it is better to take heavy armor specialization, not the weapon one, as the weapon is only one item and all armor pieces, well, you got the point. Enchanting. Simply take the whole middle right branch, which is all about improving your enchantment strengths, giving additional bonuses to enchanted items, and giving you ability to place two enchantments per one item in general, and three enchantments with additional enchantment bonus on one chosen item. Alchemy. Here take only the basic perk, physician perk, choose the health potions, and also take stimulants and crimson haze to receive speed bonus as well as magicka and stamina regeneration after using the potion. This will already partially ease the lordstone drawback, but that's not the only moment, don't worry. Now the unique vampire abilities, what you should point your attention on and exact vampire abilities from a big list you should choose and how they are working. First of all, try to progress in Blue Blood Vampire Questline added by Sacrosanct. This means feeding on the most powerful personalities of Skyrim like Ulfric, General Tullius, Maven Blackbriar and so on. Each time you feed on such person, you receive a unique passive ability, up to 7 abilities in total. They give various combat, utility and roleplay features, but the two most noticeable from this list is the first and the last. Potence is giving you damage boost which is doubled when you are sated, and Daywalker removes all non-lethal debuffs from you when walking during the day, which is very very useful. The Age of Vampire is literally its power. The more time you live as vampire, the older and more experienced you become, and each time you advance in rank, you can choose one of the many abilities. Here is the list of abilities you should take for Blood Knight. I also strongly recommend to keep the same order of taking them. Blood Knight allows you to feed on staggered enemies straight in combat, Cauldron of Fire, double attack and critical damage and take half damage for 30 seconds after activating Blood Cauldron, we'll show it further. Dance with the Beast, additional double damage dealt and half damage taken when affected by Vessel. Vessel is a side effect activating after some conditions related to Thirst, a drawback which, as you can see, will turn into benefit. 
Wicked Wind, teleporting power that allows you to simply instantly dash in chosen direction for 15 feet distance. That's absolutely amazing power, allowing you to directly evade the attacks, teleport to enemy mages and appear on the rooftops, giving you insane movement capabilities. The Path of Humanity, a very important passive as most of Blood Knight bonuses are built around sated form, gives a chance to delay Vampiric Surf's progression. King Among Kind, you no longer lose any powers when feeding. This ability description may look not so impressive, but it is actually a must-have skill because you only once reach the most hungry state, for example, where you receive the most uh, strong drawbacks, but also the insanely strong powers. Then keep feeding, losing the hungry state drawbacks, but keeping the powers like uh, Nightwalk, Obfuscate and Flaywind. We'll show them soon. Also, two secondary powers you can take after you taking all the powers listed above. Summons to Moloch card. Using a mental call, you are drawing the closest person to you even if it's hostile, calming it and allowing you to feed. Feeding also resists the cooldown. Harvest Moon. Very useful utility passive that gives you a blood potion each time you feed. Now the Varas powers and abilities themselves, the unique Blood Knight skills that are making him incredibly strong and so fun to play. Blood Cauldron. Use a portion of your own blood to restore your health, magicka and stamina, but also making you thirstier. Blood Revel. Should be used instantly after the Blood Cauldron. Gives you additional 25% damage bonus. Using this power also activates Vassal in return, which slightly decreases your attributes and slowly drain them. But with the Cauldron of Fire and Dance with the Beast double synergy, this state, with just a minimum drawback, will give you quadruple damage and 75 damage reduction in addition to your default damage and armor and magic resistances. Insane, yeah? Flay Wind is a strong ability that greatly helps against tough enemies, making them to run and fear while draining their vital forces very fast. Kiss of Death is a passive power gaming ability that increases all your three attributes by one point each time you drain someone, means a little feeding. The best moment here is that you can not only drain the innocent sleeping victims, but for example, become very hungry, so any feeding automatically leads to drain, and then just feed on Bandit in combat, draining him to death and receive the bonus as well. Sacrosanct is also giving unique vampire racial ability to each race. That's another moment why Dunmer is so good. Dunmers don't have vampire racial by default, but they receive a vampire racial of the person who they fed on, making you to choose any ability you like in fact. The ability I recommend is Misfortune, Kajit Vampire Racial, that is passive and simply gives a small chance enemies around you will sleep and fall down, very useful in massive battles and for combat feeding as well. Gladly, there are more than enough Kajits in Skyrim to feed on them. Nightwalk is a useful scout and combat initiation skill. For example, there are too many bandits in the fort and you somehow need to eliminate that strong mage behind the warriors first. Just send the mist to scout the area and then take its place instantly, appearing where you want to be. Obfuscate is a total invisibility spell that can be activated even in combat, a very useful trick to escape if you met too hard enemies. Also works great together with the Wicked Wind, allowing you to live in the battlefield and hide in a blink of an eye. Summon to Moloch's card ability is a very useful in combat, because it allows you to feed one more time, making you sated and so refreshing the blood cauldron for example, allowing you to use it again and again in the same battle. Now enchantments. As usual it is completely a matter of taste, but I just want to show you my own enchantments pack that I consider to be the most useful. First of all, use the Master Enchanting perk to place 3 enchantments on your weapon. Place the HP Drain, Stamina Drain and the Power Attack bonus damage. Gloves – one-handed damage bonus and decreased cost of power attacks. Armor – health and stamina absorption. Boots – one-handed damage bonus and bonus stamina. Shield – bonus blocking and chance to stagger enemies around you when blocking an attack. Necklace – magic resistance and chance per second to restore your all three attributes. Ring, magic resistance and decreased damage taken at low health. 
The armor set I have used in this video had non-enchantable helmet for some reason, so I set two enchantments on the left hand ring for bonus health and increased total armor rating. As you can see, enchantments are mostly focused on protective and utility abilities, and many of them are working in a great synergy with Blood Knight vampire powers and passives. Now, let's get to the most interesting part, gameplay demonstration. Enjoy! That's all for today folks, and I hope you enjoyed this build. Share your thoughts about it and let me know which build you want to see the next. Don't forget to enable channel notifications and join our Discord to always stay in touch. Scimitar Gaming here, signing out.